Okay, I finally got the parts for my fire suppression system. Uh, this is the fire suppression system right here. There's just a ton of components that go to this thing, as you can see. Uh, those are the bulbs that burst when the fire reaches a certain temperature. Those are 450 degree max temperature, then they will rupture and uh, release the fire suppressant. Uh, that's the cable that I need, some gas piping. These are the elbows for the um, cable to run through. There goes the gas shut off right there and I, uh, this is the, the frame that's going to hold the tank for the fire suppression. Okay so what I'm thinking is I'd like to have this sitting about right here and then there will be gas pipe underneath here to run to the back of the unit but I'm going to have it basically stop the gas pipe around here so it can uh, feed both the, the gas unit. So if I have it sitting here and then this box, I can just take the head off, set it about like that and that should work. So I think I'm going to just nail that about right there, just try and get it even, call it a day. Let me see here. This is the actual fire suppression tank right here. Um, I think I'm going to have to have it or, uh, orientated this way because I want the gas to come out and then come up this way to meet uh, these first two. That last one is the, where the cable goes for the, uh, the bulbs. Let me show you. So the bulbs go up in there. The uh, thermal expanding bulbs. So when they when the fire encounters them, that's when they blow. Hopefully that will never happen. Hopefully this thing is just for show because I never want to use this thing. There's a lot of gas piping I have to get to put to pipe in to where this thing is supposed to go. But first I want to get it mounted and basically fit it to where it needs to stand. So this is roughly the look of it. And so from here, on this side, the cable comes out and has to go to that one. Uh, then this cable is gonna run along the ceiling across to the other side to where I have, to where I have the pool chain. That's where this one goes. So it's gonna sit roughly about right here on the wall for the emergency pool or one of these sides. It's gonna sit over here, um, basically. Then there's a, a another one that comes down. It's gonna go down to this gas lever to do the automatic shutoff. But this is roughly what the fire suppression is gonna to start to look like. Then I gotta measure all the cable and put the gas, uh, the thermal couplers. Then I gotta put the thermal couplers up in here. There's three of them. Um, put them up in here, run the cable, and then run this this tubing, the cable in this tubing, 
and connect the elbows, which are those things right there. Then I got to connect those elbows. And once I connect those elbows, then I can tighten the system and basically make it operational. So when looking at the fire suppression system, what I have to do is I have to make a hole here, a hole right here, and a hole on the side. And a hole on the side. This one down here. Okay, so basically how it works is you have these knobs up, uh, knobs up in here, but I won't be using this one because I only have one link that I'm using. Well, technically it's three different ways you can trigger this thing, but the automatic way, I only have one link triggering. So basically, I have to cut these holes out, put that in there like that, and the cable comes through, goes through there, and then you wrap it around, and it triggers the mechanism triggers the mechanism and then you trigger this mechanism and that basically but when you set the mechanism you this one pulls up and it allows the gas to flow through here so if the system is ever triggered by you or automatically it shuts the gas off by pushing this plunger in and this mechanism will allow the pressure from one from the CO2 cartridge to flow through here then in turn flow through this line activating this actuator and pushing the the, uh, the fire suppression material liquid gas or whatever you have through the gas piping through here and then out through your nozzles and that's how it works Okay, so now with this back on the wall and the holes cut, now I can take, these are, these are also compression fittings. When I put that up in there, I cut this pipe to length, so that's a compression fitting, it holds onto it, then I'm going to bring it up and basically use one of these elbows. This is technically not an elbow, it's a pulley, so it has a little pulley on the inside of there that the cable can ride in in a groove so it doesn't get hung up as it goes through so this is a pretty simple setup so this one will sit like here and then there'll be one right here and then there'll be one right here that comes out goes straight down into the various components and so that's one way of triggering the automatic trigger and then there's also a manual trigger on here too because you can pull the lever and trigger it that way and then the other one is just for shutting off the gas that'll be down here all right sorry you guys missed out on it but uh i had to really hunker down and do some thinking so this is basically what it looks like i completed some of the parts already but not all of them so i still got some stuff to do so basically this is the cable runs through there it's a pulley in there so it's free flowing and doesn't get snagged and this one, I pretty much connected it already, if you can see. So, this cable is the manual release for the other side of the uh, trailer. So, this is technically the back wall. And when you look over here, here's going to be where the manual release comes in. So, basically, it just runs along the ceiling 
straight to the unit and when this is triggered you can manually release it there's going to be a pin here you can manually manually release from right here or you can manually release from right there and then over here I have to um, basically cut crimp and make a loop put the bulb cut crimp make a loop and connect to the bulb and then do the same thing for the other two and then technically you can arm the system Okay, let's talk about some of the specialty tools you might need if you plan on tackling your own fire suppression system. One of them is a, a, a swedge tool that uh, clamps down on the uh, swedges that you have to use to make the proper connection. Um, one of them is right here, if you can see it, hold on. Okay, so if I could zoom in on it, you see that? Hold on, there it goes. I have to make these loops. I have to make one here and I have to make it here before I start actually turning this. Oops, I shouldn't have did that. But before I start turning this I have to make one here so it won't back out. And then this is what it looks like. Little S hook with a little uh, clamp on it or with the uh, swedge on it and then these just hook on there. So the heat basically just will blow that bulb and I got to put an S hook on this side to clamp and the S hook and the clamp and the bulb in the center on each section and that's where the automatic part comes in. So when that bulb cinches 450 degrees or greater it will separate and when it separates when the system is under load it triggers the mechanism. It's pretty cool.
But these are the, uh, the, the temperature bulbs basically in place. Uh, all three of them hooked together. I have one more spout to put right here that shoots up into the fan just in case fire gets that high, but you know, hopefully that'll never happen. This cable goes through here, then you turn this. Then I'll put this cable through here like so. Kind of hard to do with one hand. Uh, you put the little swedge on the edge of this, and then you start turning it. And once you start turning it, this whole apparatus will tighten up and set in this position. That's the set position. And then you have to also turn this to set it, put the pin in so you can connect the... Uh... I have to figure out exactly how I'm going to connect the gas piping below everything be only because um, I need it to be sturdy because it's got to pull that pin up with force to allow gas to flow through. Everything's looking pretty good though. Um, and then as far as the, the actual fire suppression that's going to flow through both of these, it's going to come out of here. I think I'm going to go up first. Then you got to put this bleeder valve in there. It has a little check valve in it. Put the bleeder valve in there. I'll come around to a union to this one and then to a union to this one, um, to the second one. So once I do that, everything as far as the fire suppression will be pretty much connected. Okay, this thing is about 95% finished. Um, it's, it's armed right now. This is the piping for the actual uh, suppressant, fire suppressant. Um, I have all the nozzles in. There was one extra nozzle that goes up there that actually shoots into the fan. Uh, the thermal couplers are in. And the last step is the gas line, but I actually have to wait for that because that's a part of the gas. So I'm going to wait for that. So as far as the look of this thing, this is pretty much how it's going to look other than the, uh, the filters that go right here. Um, it's looking good though. I always say that. One step closer to finishing this project. is a finished vent hood. I still got a lot of work to do. It's a lot of tedious stuff, but we're getting there. So knocking out some of the bigger stuff like this fire suppression system. So all I have to do now is just arm the gas valve, which will be the next part of this build. And this one is loose, and that's because once you arm this, you gotta have the gas valve in, but when you pull the cord, that's why that was so loose. 
Because when you pull it, it's not supposed to be a ton of force to pull it. But yeah, you get the picture.
that'll do it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Be safe out there. Have a good week.